Okay. okay, so we will be talking about gears and kinematics of gears and gear trains. Uh, let me write here. So, here. That is a gear trains means a series of gears uh, connected to each other. Now the gears is, of course, they are important mechanical elements, but we are not going to study them in detail, but only the kinematics of them. Uh, we are going to look at the kinematics, which means the relationship between velocities and accelerations of gears. Um, now, what do they do in the first place, as you probably know, uh, they transmit power and motion. And more importantly, they, uh, uh, gears are used in gearboxes usually, uh, in which uh, they decrease the speed usually, uh, speed and just a second hello Efendim. Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. So they decrease the speed and increase the torque uh, of a motor. Of a motor. The motors, especially the electric motors, are usually devices that rotate very fast, like 2000, 3000 RPMs. And these are the speeds that do, we do not require them. We require less speed, but usually more torque. And gearbox are ideally, uh, they decrease the uh, speed and increase the torque so that the power remains constant in them. Gearboxes are made up of usually a series of gears. Uh, let me draw you a, a kind of a gear system here. Like one gear is supposedly like this one and another one is Let's say this here. Um, let's say that they are fixed. Um, 
So uh, in this gear system, let's say if you consider it as a mechanism, let's say this is one, this is two, and this is three uh, links. So uh, this thing rotates with, let's say, theta two. This thing rotates with theta three, okay? First of all, uh, the gears are linear uh, rotation, linear mechanical systems, which means that the relationship between uh, theta two and theta three, uh, if theta three is the input, let's say k times theta three, k being a constant. So you have a linear relation. Uh, it's a simple relation. And this relation applies to uh, angular velocities as well. Say omega times, omega two is k times omega two. The same relationship applies. And as you see, uh, the angular velocities have a certain proportionality between them. Now we know that the gear pair as a, as a joint has a, a joint degree of freedom of two, but then the degree of freedom of this gear system with its round and so on, the degree of freedom analysis will give you that its degree of freedom is one. The gear pair that is grounded has a degree of freedom of one, as you know. Okay. So the one input is enough for this gear pair, but the, as we will see, there will be multiple uh, gear pairs. Now, there are two possibilities for the gear pairs, by the way. One is this one I have drawn. Uh, for example, uh, let me go another one. Right here. Okay. Um, the second is the following. You might have a, a large gear, and inside you can have a small one, like this one. Now, what does this mean? Um, This is just as we had before about. This is a, called an external mesh. That is, the gears are connected to each other externally. Whereas here, uh, you have a, as you see, an internal mesh. Um, well, the gearing, as you see, the, the gears are meshed. One is inside the other one. So they rotate like this. Okay. That is one gear rotates inside the other one. So this is an internal mesh. Okay. So um, the points, the Main thing is that the points of contact of gears uh, is the same. Let's say this is the gear this time, let's call this one two, this one three, and let's call this one two, this one three. And let's say that uh, well, this thing, the gear has a diameter of E3. This one has a diameter of et etc. The point of contact is P, let's say, so that here you have E3 or V2. Okay, so the point of contact. Uh, in both gears has the same velocity. Okay. 
the same as here. Both points have the same velocity. So this is VT. This is VT. Um, the, the both gears have certain angular velocities. Let's say this is omega 2. This is what? Uh, omega 3. This is, let's say, um, omega 2. And one thing you should note is that in the external mesh, omega 2 and omega 3 are in opposite directions. Is omega 2 is clockwise or counterclockwise here. Omega 3 will be counterclockwise. So they are in opposite directions. Whereas in the internal mesh, as you see, both omega 2 and omega 3 are in the same direction. They are both counterclockwise or they are both clockwise here, actually. Uh, another way of drawing these gears uh, as a uh, simple, I don't know, let me go here. Um, as a, let me use this one. For the external mesh, for example, I can use the following. So this is the, uh, we are looking at this one. Let's say this is gear two, this is gear three. I'm looking at them from the side view, okay? So this is the side uh, view of external mesh. Is this clear? You, we are looking at them from, you know, from the bottom or from the top. Uh, so that I see the gears with their shafts on. So this rotates with, let's say, something like omega 2, and this rotates with omega 3, etc. Whereas the side view of an internal mesh gear would be something like this. This would be the drawing is not very precise as you can guess. It is let me actually uh, let's undo this. This is basically better. Than so uh, this is the large external gear, right? This one too. The ground is one, and this is. Uh, gear three. So this is the side view of the internal. We can uh, always draw these uh, either this way or this way. I think this is usually we draw them in the side view so that uh, we sort of save space and you get used to viewing the gears from the side view. Uh, let's say this is omega two. This will be omega three for example. Um,
let me uh, go to another page. So if you have uh, an external mesh, what you will have is that the velocity of the point of contact in both gears, uh, VP2, which we will call VP, velocity of the contact, will be equal to, let's say, omega two times the R2, okay? Which will be uh, minus omega three times R3. Why do I put a minus here? Because if omega two is counterclockwise, sorry, if omega two is clockwise, Omega three would be counterclockwise. Um, so uh, we, in order to indicate the directions, we put a uh, minus sign here. Okay. So this is, let's say, uh, clockwise. This would be counterclockwise, as you see. Whereas for an internal mesh, this will be uh, kind of different. Uh, but okay, let's let's continue with the internal one. Um, so uh, the ratio of the radiuses, radii, R two over R three. If I uh, write this down, by the way, you understand that VP is, I suppose, if this is VP, if this is omega, and if this is R. Omega times R is the VP, okay, as you know. Uh, therefore, R2 over R3 is minus o omega 3 over omega 2. So we define a parameter for the gear ratio, gear ratio for a system, uh, for a gear, what, mesh gear, R2, 3, let's say two gears mesh to each other will be uh, R2 over R3 ratio of two gears. And that will be equal to, uh, well, considering the fact that they are in omega three over omega two. This minus sign indicates that these are external gears. This is true for externals. And as a matter of fact, we can even write the following R23, the gear ratio for a two meshed, two externally meshed gears is ratio of the radiuses, which is equal to the ratio of the diameters, as you can guess. And also. <coughs> John, isn't it supposed to be R2 over R3? I don't hear you. Huh? Ah, okay, okay, I'm sorry. If you, if the, these are the number of teeth, the ratio of number of teeth has to be equal to the uh, ratio of the radiuses as well, okay? in order to, for them to mesh uh, clearly, you will see this. Actually, you are going to study gears in your MAC 308 course, where you will see these in detail. Uh, and this will be minus omega three over omega uh, two. It's in reverse now, you see it's not T2 over T3, but omega T3 over omega two. And this is minus, let's say, and three over and two. Now, uh, usually omega is reserved for if the, you know, if you measure it in radians per second and n is reserved for if it is uh, measured in RPMs, okay. So uh, the gear ratio is, these are all true for the, um, external mesh. 
Whereas for an internal mesh, I can number of keep this clear here. Um, for an internal mesh, it's very similar, obviously. The difference being VP3 equals VP2 equals VP, but this will be equal to omega 2 R2, and that will be equal to omega 3 R3 with, without the minus sign, as you see. Okay. So R23 for internal gearing is again R2 over R3, but this will be equal to plus uh, omega 3 over omega 2, okay? Because they will be rotating in the same direction if you have an internal gear. This is for external as you see. So in general, we can say the following. Uh, R23, the gear ratio of a two mesh gears is R2 over R3, always. But uh, you can say this is plus minus omega 3 over omega 2, uh, where obviously plus is for uh, internal gearing, minus is for external gearing. And in general, you can say for two gears of I and J, you can say this is the ratio of Ri over Rj or Ti over Tj. Okay. It is pretty much clear, I suppose, all these things. One more thing is that uh, if you have simple gears, In the case of simple gears, both uh, gears are grounded, which means, for example, uh, let's say this is one gear, this is another gear, they are connected to each other. And then uh, you ground this one, you ground that one. This is a simple gear pair, okay? Because both two and three are in, connected to the ground, as you see. Well, you might think, what else can it be? But there is another possibility. There are the so-called planetary, planetary, gears in which one gear is grounded and the other one is rotates around each other. One gear, let's say, uh, rotates around another one. So uh, let me draw the planetary gears also, for example, Let's say this is one. Let's say oh, let me do this here. Too much. Uh, So let's say that this is grounded, but this one is not grounded, but rather it is connected to this one with a kind of a rod like this. Okay. Uh, and it rotates around it. So uh, uh, in this case, 
you will have, this will be the, let's say, this is two, this is three, this is four. First of all, there are, well, four links here. Uh, this is the song gear. This is the planet gear. So the planet gear rotates around the song gear and it makes a complex motion. It, it is not grounded, as you see, it is connected to the song gear through this rod, this link three. Um, and the, this thing is called the arm, arm gear, okay? So in this case, uh, we have more complex motion. Well, uh, simple gears are obviously easier, easier, but uh, we will look at the planetary gear trains as well uh, during this uh, course, in this course. That is, we are going to look at how these things behave, how, how the planetary gears behave, which is a little bit more complicated. Okay. Uh, first of all, now, if you have, uh, we will start from the simple gears. Um, let's, uh, Look at some simple things. Let's have a kind of a simple example. This one is too simple. Let's increase the uh, the complexity a little bit more. Let's say we have one gear connected to it. We have another gear. And connected to that, we have another one. Okay. They are simple gears, so we have fixed. Uh, rounded gears. Let's say this rotates with omega two, this rotates with omega three. So this is omega three, and therefore this is omega four. And they have radiuses like this is R2, this is R3, this is R4, etc. Radiuses. Uh, we know that uh, omega 3 over omega 2 is equal to minus R2 over R3. Okay. Moreover, uh, this is for the first one. For the second one, Omega four over omega two, sorry, omega three is equal to minus uh, R three over R four, right? Now, in this case, uh, well, if you have a gear train like this one, usually you would have an input like here an output like that, okay? So output over input would be uh, omega four over omega two. This is what we are really interested. And that would be omega, three, omega two over omega three times uh, omega four over omega three, where omega three is cancelled, as we see. 
and that will be equal to from here, as we see, minus R2 over R3 times minus R3 over R4. Okay. And R3 is also canceled. So what we get is uh, R2 over R4. And that's a plus R2 over R4, by the way. So in a way, this is, we can call it R2, 4. So what is the point of, uh, this is the gear ratio between two and four. This is the gear ratio, as you see, of between two and four. But so what is the point of having this, uh, this gear, three? Well, it gets canceled out, isn't it? Actually, this gear is called the idler gear, okay? It just rotates idly. It doesn't do much of a thing here, but it has a certain function. What is the function of the idler? Idler gear changes direction in the first place. If, if two and four were connected directly to each other, they would be rotating in, this, in opposite directions, as you see. Whereas now, they are uh, rotating in the same direction just because of the idler. And also, uh, it fills the gap, let's say, between two and four, isn't it? Because if those two shafts are uh, distant to each other, you have to put something in between to, uh, to connect them. Okay. So this is the, uh, well, in simple gear trains actually, you have, uh, well, if you have multiple gears, Basically, um, the, the ones in the middle, well, they do matter. They do matter in terms of the change in the speed, but they don't matter. Their speeds do not really matter. Uh, well, now I will try to solve some problems, but so, Long. One more thing. Before that, you will see this in 308 course, but let me just uh, talk to you about this. Uh, two gears. can only mesh if they have If they have the same module M. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that uh, T2 over D2, which is called the diametric pitch, has to be equal to T3 over uh, D3. This is called the diametric pitch PD. Or the its inverse, D2 over T2 is equal to D3 over T3, which is called the module of the gear. Uh, this basically means the length 
have a number of seeds. Number of seeds. Uh, if t, t is the number of teeth, by the way, uh, in order for them to mesh correctly, they have, must have the same module. That is, uh, for example, they might, they should have uh, the same module. That is the same length for the number of teeth, okay? So that the gears can mesh with each other correctly. Let's uh, keep this in mind. So uh, that's why we, instead of using diameters in the gear uh, ratio, we can use the number of teeth. If they don't, uh, if they don't have the same module or the diameter fix, the gears cannot rotate, they cannot mesh, cannot you know get into contact with each other. Okay, so I have to show an example, and it's very unfortunate that I cannot copy and paste here, uh, so I have to draw it myself, uh, which takes a lot of time, unfortunately, but let me try to do it. I say that this is a gearbox. With many gears, and some of them are concentric. Um, these two are the same gear, for example. So let's say uh, this thing is two, three, four. Okay. And this is this let's say rotates it omega two. This has the number of teeth is specified T two, T three. Okay. Now uh, here this is the this one is T four, but the internal is T four prime. Let's say okay. Uh, two gears are are in the same shaft are connected to the same shaft here. T4 and T4 prime. And the same is true for T5 here and T5 prime. And this is T6. And uh, this is the input gear. This is the output gear. We would like to find uh, the relationship between the angular velocities. Omega two is there, omega six, we don't know the direction. We can guess, I guess, but this will be, if this is clockwise, clockwise, probably it's clockwise also. Like here, yeah. huh? uh, omega six, let's say. So we would like to find out 
omega six over omega two. So we uh, start from uh, here R two three is T two over T three. No, but uh, this is link four, so we don't want to number them like T four prime, etc. Okay, do you understand? Uh, but if I, you know, if I call this T five. And this is link five, and this is, this is T5, it would get confusing. That's why. Do you understand? Um, oh, here we have, you know, two gears in the same shaft. Uh, they form one link. Uh, so that's why we call them four prime. Well, here uh, I will put a negative sign here. Actually, okay. I'll put this here so that uh, I I don't have to put omega. Uh, this will be omega three. Okay. I put the minus sign here because uh, I want to find the relationship between omega 2 and omega 3. Uh, it is better to put it here instead of here. So R34, which is meshed, 34 is again minus T3 uh, over T4. Which is equal to omega four over omega three. Then we have R four five would be equal to uh, four and five now are connected to T four prime and T five, right? So this will be minus. T4 prime over T5, which will be equal to omega 5 over omega 4. And R56 will be minus T5 prime, or prime is there. Okay. As you can guess, uh, we want to find omega two over, or sorry, omega six over omega two. Output over the input. Out over in. Okay. This will be uh, omega three over omega two times omega. Four over omega three times omega five over omega four times omega six over omega five. And you see omega omega three is cancelled, omega four is cancelled. So this will be equal to
Okay, QT uh, is going to get canceled, but not much else because the rest are. Five prime, four prime, two. Okay, uh, something like this. In order to drive some derive some conclusions from here. Uh, Let's stop here and take a break and we will then continue. Let's pause the recording. Let's share. Okay. Um, so we looked at this example. Now this example might look a little bit Strange. Uh, let me try to draw you what this, for example, this four and uh, well, the connection between three, four, and five is, for example, from the side view uh, to make it a little bit clearer. But I have to go to another page there. So, for example, let's say you have. Uh, yes, shaft. This is here three with T three. Okay, then uh, this. Uh, let's go back. This rotates at T four. On the same shaft, uh, which is here, you have T4 prime, okay? So T4 and T4 prime rotate with the same angular velocity. And now this rotates, let's say T5. And on the same shaft with T5, you have, um, let me see, how was it? T5 prime is a smaller one. So, you have T5 prime, and that rotates, but this is on the same shaft again. T6. And T3 is connected to T2, let's say, which I can also include. So let's say if this is omega 2, this is omega 6. And uh, this is the side view uh, of the same gearing, which looks uh, much less understandable, I suppose, compared to this one. This is much more clearer, but sometimes people use, you know, draw it like this to save space and so on. Um, so this is omega two. Let's say this is three. This is four. Okay, so what did we find? Our two we found R two six, which was omega two over omega six. No, sorry, uh, omega six over omega two output over. 
az equal to p5 prime p4 prime p2 divided by p6 p5 p4 um, in general look you can uh, first of all p3 is a as you see, this is an idler gear. This has no function really, except for rotating the uh, string, uh, except for changing the direction that is. Um, so the teeth of number three is irrelevant here. But if you look at it, uh, T2 drives T4, okay? T2 drives T3, T3 drives T4. So T4 is the driven. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, oh, yes, T4. T4 prime now drives T5. Uh, T5 prime drives T6. So you can write this R. Two six as something like uh, minus one to the power four uh, product of driving uh, teeth divided by product. This is always true, actually. Teeth, uh, I should say, maybe teeth number. This is always true, but it is sometimes a little bit uh, difficult to see. In general, you can say the following Rij is equal to minus one to the power k. Okay. Number product of ribbon or radius or whatever, and k is k is a number of external. Masses. So you, here we have uh, four external meshes, as you see, one, two, three, and four external meshes, or it's maybe easier to see here, one mesh here, second here, third here, and fourth here, four meshes. So the uh, direction will change uh, four times. Uh, uh, yes, so that it will be uh, in the same direction, for example. This is always true for simple uh, gears. And if the gears are, of course, external. For internal, they don't have that. Okay, one more thing uh, before I stop. Belts uh, are kind of similar to gears, if you look at it. Let me just very briefly talk about them. Um, as you know, the belts are uh, also used in power transmission. They are not as uh, strong as gears, but they can carry power to long distances, like a few meters perhaps, okay? 
Therefore, they used to be using, uh, sorry, this is R2. Actually, this is omega 2. This is B. This is B. Okay. Now, the belts are called, you know, they can carry power, as I said, from a, uh, a kind of a long distance. Uh, this is one possible configuration for a belt. And as you see in this configuration, the angular velocities are the same, well, are in the same direction. But there is another possibility, which is this one. Okay. Now, uh, the belts can be crossed like this one. Hmm. Anyway, you understand it's not a very good drawing, but I guess you understand what I'm trying to do. This belt goes around this thing. So this is the, uh, let's say this is R2, this is R3. Here you will have omega 2 and omega 3. So this is the called the open configuration. This is the cross configuration. Here you will have uh, the velocity of the belt is the same. So omega 2 R2 is equal to omega 3 R3. Okay. Whereas here you will have omega 2 R2 will be equal to minus omega 2 R3. Okay. So in the open configuration, you will have R23 will be equal to R2 over R3, which is omega 3 over omega 2. Here in the cross configuration, R23 will be again R2 over R3. But this will be, this time it will be minus. The directions will be different. The directions will be opposite. Okay. So they are very similar to the, uh, as you see, the gears. Uh, the the kinematics of belts is quite similar to the gears. This one corresponds to external mesh, sorry, internal mesh. And this one corresponds to the external mesh. Okay. So I will stop here for the gears. I will talk about uh, uh, gearbox, the speed change gearbox and so on the next time. But uh, I think we have had enough for today. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. If not, I will stop uh, at this point. So do you have any questions about the exam or anything? Um, anything you uh, might be curious?
What does that mean? Um, well, um, both, I guess, you have to do some calculation, but not too much. That is, I don't expect you to, uh, you know, compute all these velocities and accelerations very precisely. Um, if you can write their equations correctly, that would be good enough for you. Uh, that is, I don't want you to spend a lot of time on, you know, finding, um, applying the Kramer's rule and finding the inverse of the matrix and so on. Uh, but you have to know what, you are doing that's the thing um the time is rather limited so i don't want you to spend too much time to compute but still you should do some computing so you need to bring your calculators with you um you should know about uh, uh, complex number manipulations. Uh, well, the topics are kind of obvious. You have to know the uh, degree of freedom analysis, position analysis, velocity acceleration analysis, that's all. And also a little bit about that brush of condition for four bars, etc. Okay, let me uh, stop sharing this thing. So is there anything from the Zoom audience? Any questions? Well, if not, if there is nothing, I will stop. Uh, well, it will be a short lecture, but uh, we are on a uh, you know exam week, so I don't want to force you too much. Okay, goodbye then. Have a nice day, John. See you later. See you. Bye.